Uh, greetings, brothers and sisters. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. It is the 27th of August, uh, 2023, and it's uh, about 20 to 8 in the evening here in South Africa. And I'm back with another recording, and uh, this will not be a long video. I'm going to try and keep it uh, within a reasonable period of time. And, but there's something that I really want to share with you guys some exciting stuff that I've that I've recently discovered in the scriptures and this uh, concerns uh, some chrono chronological uh, sequences uh, but more specifically the chronology of uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ in other words the time that he actually spent um, in his ministry which is usually referred to as three and a half years uh, in the church believe it to be a three and a half year period of his ministry and uh, so I want to go into a little bit of detail of I decided to to get into into that aspect uh, building on the chronology of the Bible that I've spoken about in previous videos and in the last video where we where we've uh, discovered the exact day uh, well the exact year uh, that the uh, jubilee occurred in in uh, in, in Jesus' day, uh, where Jesus proclaimed the jubilee, which has a profound effect, and uh, on our understanding of exactly where we are in the uh, in the Shemitah cycle and the jub or the jubilee cycle. Uh, so that that was that was pretty exciting to see, and so I've, I've decided to get into a little bit more detail around that period. Of Jesus baptism um, and we, where his ministry as Messiah really began uh, uh, when he began when he when he turned 30 and we and and so we, there's there's some information in in the New Testament that we can really dig into and get into those those th that three and a half years to understand it a little better and I discovered something quite interesting um, and that's what I want to share with you guys and, and that is the actual time period that Jesus walked with his disciples was not three and a half years and uh, that's that's what I want to get into so that's that's pretty exciting and I believe I can I can demonstrate it well I, I know that I can demonstrate I can show you from the scripture I like to to um, show these things from the scriptures it's not what I say that's 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 important that's what the scriptures say and and, and so what I want to do in this video is just show you a couple of things that I've discovered that you can go and check out for yourself and you can decide for yourself whether this is the truth or not. Um, so it's straight out of the scriptures, exactly uh, out of the book and understanding some of the nuances, some of the detail. You know, so often we read through things and we have a preconceived idea or a preconceived understanding probably because of what we've been taught uh, previously and we read it and we read through some of the detail and we miss those nuances that actually uh, are interpreted incorrectly by, by, by many teachers um, and and largely because of their uh, lack of understanding of the what I call the biblical chronology so we have we have uh, theological teachers out there and theological uh, uh, students and professors and experts whatever you want to call them that will that will that are teaching uh, based on a chronology that was not derived exclusively from the bible and uh, that's a wrong foundation in fact what they what, what most scholars are building their their chronology on is uh, the 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 canon of a guy by the name of Ptolemy and uh, just to give it to you a very brief uh, summary of, of, of what has happened is that the, the, there was a lack of information, a lack of record, a missing record in the history to know exactly the time period, that time period uh, when, when Israel was, uh, was, was in Babylon for, for captivity for 70 years. That time period of around about, let's call it 700 BC through to f uh, f 600 500 400 bc that period there we uh, and the time of the babylonian kings uh, later replaced by the medes and persians later replaced by uh, 
the Greeks and um, so we there was one record that that was that was picked up and discovered and that was Ptolemy's cannon who, who tried to who, who was uh, first of all he was a geologist and an astronomer and a, a historian on the sideline and he put together uh, a a chronology f of those the time of that time period um, and uh, that was all that that the biblical scholars modern day biblical scholars if you want to call it for the for the last hundreds of years have had and they've built their entire understanding uh, using that as a f as a rock using that using Ptolemy's uh, a time period for uh, his chronology for that time period as a building block on which they they today uh, um, try to interpret the Bible and it was because of that uh, using or, or the use of that that particular uh, canon that they missed the correct interpretation of Daniel's 70 weeks and they missed the correct interpretation of the of who which decree we know that the de the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was the trigger for for Daniel's 70 weeks but there's been much debate as to which uh, w when the actual trigger occurred and of course that trigger and that 70 weeks was the time from Daniel to the arrival of the Messiah okay so uh, because they they used uh, 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 Ptolemy's canon there was a, an 82 year area error in 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 his canon and that 82 error is what the Bible shows us so in other words instead of going back and building up a chronology from Adam all the way to to the time of Daniel uh, based exclusively on the biblical record uh, which would which would give them an accurate date to pin that uh, those 70 years that Israel and and or more specifically an accurate year to pin the beginning um, of the seven of Daniel 70 weeks which would be then the countdown to the com to the first advent of, of Jesus Christ of our Messiah and uh, so because they didn't do that they sitting they based their entire uh, understanding on a, on a uh, on a canon that has an error and as a result they've got a, a chronology uh, that's 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 fraught with errors so this this situation uh, was wasn't uh, acceptable to a guy by the name of Reverend Martin Anstey and uh, he decided that the, it must be possible to be able to understand the exact sequence of events and the exact timing and be able to establish a chronology exclusively from the Bible many before him had attempted to do so and he and he did use some of the work that they had done but there were problems in some of the in, in many of them. They, nobody really was able to come to a complete conclusion on the matter. I never completed the, the chronology accurately. It, it, Martin Anstey was the first to have, have su successfully done that, and he published his book in 1913. So that's about that's 110 years ago. And he published his, his chronology, his biblical, which he he called his book the Romance of Biblical Chronology. And uh, you'll see on my videos, I've done four videos that really cover in great detail what Martin Anstey published and, and the work that he had done and how he, and how he, he, he derived the true biblical chronology exclusively from the Bible. No other sources, nothing, zero, zipper, nothing from any other source exclusively from the Bible, all the way from Adam through to the coming of our Messiah, uh, a chronology based with, which is accurate to the year and more recent uh, research and uh, digging into it has proven that this chronology is, is actually is, is extremely accurate so what I've decided to do is now get into that that year we, we, we get to, to, before to get into the to, to the detail of of, of, of that that time period when Jesus was uh, was ministering 
and that three and a half years, we need to understand a few things from that biblical chronology. And that's why I'm, I'm speaking about this. So um, I'm not going to go into much more detail on that. I can. I just want to encourage you, if you have not already done that, it, is, it seems like we've got at least another year to go uh, before uh, the, the th things really start to happen. So we've got time on hands. And I want to encourage uh, my, my brothers and sisters in Christ, my friends, my family, go and spend the time understanding the biblical chronology. It is not something that's, w uh, that's well taught, at, well, not taught at all. And it's something that I believe that all uh, Christians should should have a foundation of. Spend some time. It's it's not going to be a five-minute exercise. It's going to take you a good couple of hours and uh, a fair amount of reading and a fair amount of, uh, of, of research to get to the, to the thing. But I've tried to make it easier by, by putting it in, in, in these four videos. They are lengthy, but I want to encourage you to work through it because it is so rewarding to be able to see how the Lord has provided this information for us uh, to, to be discovered in, in His Word. If you want to see a little bit more abbreviated version of, of how we get to understand exactly when Jesus, when the Messiah, when He was baptized, and I can tell you now that based on the biblical chronology, Jesus was baptized in the year 2980, and I don't say so, but that is what the biblical chronology tells us. This video here, the 6,000 years of biblical chronology is, is much is it really a summary, a get to the point type video of of how the of da how Daniel's seventy weeks brings us to that year. So um, that's I, I want to encourage you to to look at that. But just very briefly, because it is the foundation for what I'm going to share with you guys to, uh, on this video concerning Jesus' ministry. We just need to understand very briefly that. We, from the biblical, this is this is this is a spreadsheet, okay, that I put together. It was uh, um, Reverend Martin Anstey's uh, tables. He had put a whole lot of tables together, tabulating the the detail of the chronology all the way from Adam uh, to the time of Christ. And what I've really done is I've just brought it, his tables into Excel format so that I can. Uh, work with it and I've added a fair amount of detail and, and I'll continue to do so like for example we've added the the Schmitter cycle and the now that we know exactly where the Jubilee cycle is we've been able to add the Jubilee cycle to these tables as well which Martin Anstey didn't have he didn't have that information we didn't pick up on that particular we didn't wasn't an area of focus uh, for his needs of understanding so that's what this spreadsheet I just split the tables up into into sheets uh, so each of these sheets covers a certain period and the, this particular sheet is covering the period uh, from uh, 3500 uh, a, 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 H ad hom, which means 3,500 years after Adam ad, ad hom, uh, to the year 4,000, about 4,200 um, ad hom. So that's the time period for this particular one, and that covers the time period uh, where the Israelites were in their 70 years of captivity. So, okay, I know that this is an eyesore for for those that are on a small screen. I'm, I'm sorry, this is this is not a video to be watched on a small screen. I'd highly recommend if you're on a small screen, you want to maybe consider watching it on, on a PC screen where you can get to see the detail. I can't make it... Um, too large. Uh, I'm gonna, I can try and make it a bit bigger, as, uh, uh, as, but it's never, it's never, no matter what I do, it's still going to remain a bit of an eye exercise. Okay. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to zoom right out so that you can s just follow the colors. Okay. So um, you won't be able to read the text, but basically the green line, yeah, that green line is is was the beginning of the uh, of um, of the 70 years, and that this green line would be the end of the 70 years that um, Israel was uh, that uh, Judah was in captivity in Babylon okay and we are able from from uh, we know that Daniel's prophecy was was he received the prophecy of the 70 weeks at the end towards the end of the 70 years and we know uh, that the beginning of his uh, 70 weeks 
was in the last year, the 70th year. So we, we know from a biblical chronology point of view, we know exactly what year that is. And, uh, so, and then from there we go, we've got the 400, <coughs> excuse me, we've got the, uh, the 483, which was the 69 weeks to Messiah. And then of course the last week was, was these, the week of his uh, making a covenant dur at, during which in the midst of that last week he was cut off, he was crucified. So this green line goes all the way down to, to the, um, t uh, up to here, which is the 483rd year, that's for, uh, 69 times, uh, times 7 is 483. So that would be the Messiah. That was when Jesus started his ministry, and that comes to 20. And I'm going to zoom in this shortly. I just want to give you an overview. So we're going to be looking at this period here. Um, so we're going to be looking at at these last seven years, and more specifically, that period of the first half of these last seven years, uh, the seven years w during which Messiah was cut off halfway through that that last week. Of Daniel, so that just uh, we're going to zoom into this, and I'm going to go into another table with a lot more detail around that. So I just wanted to give you that. So if zooming in, uh, we can just go through so that you can just follow. Uh, now that you can see the the numbers, just recap. So we've got the we know that the 70 years uh, started um, by in terms of Gregorian dates. The correct date was uh, the year. 523 BC in terms of Gregorian dates it would have been the the year 3520 um, at home in other words after uh, from from Adam to this date would have been 3520 years okay so that would have begin the, been the beginning of the captivity um, of where Daniel Shadrach Meshach and Abednego and many others were taken into captivity and the beginning of the 70 years of captivity okay and then at the end of their 70 years of captivity we is when Cyrus became sole king and it was in his first year that he issued the decree to rebuild Jerusalem and that happened in the year 454 BC and this is where things come unstuck because uh, according to Ptolemy's uh, uh, canon he comes with the date that uh, the first year of Osiris was, I think it's uh, 560 something, 564, 565, I don't know, somewhere around there. Uh, uh, the, well, we can actually add 82 years to, to, to this. So, uh, five, uh, 536, I think it was, he, he quoted that. It was 82 year error in his, um, in his and it was, it was, and was too early. Um, uh, his, his canon was completely out so from a biblical chronology the end of the 70 years occurred in the year 454 uh, BC which was in the year 3589 3589 um, since Adam um, in the last video I showed you okay I'm not going to get into the into the Jubilee count and the Jubilee cycle and the Shemitah cycle but um, it's just interesting but we this was this first year it occurred in the first year of a seven year Shemitah cycle uh, as well so the 70 years um, the end of the 70 and the beginning of the the, the the of the 490 years which was the 70 times 7 uh, actually started in the beginning of a Shemitah cycle as well all right so that's that was our countdown and we were we, then able to count the the 483 years to messiah that's the 69 weeks of seven weeks of weeks of years so 69 times 7 that's 483 and that we we we, we can determine occurred in the year 29 AD, which was in the year 4071 since adam and uh, then the the final week um, it was in the last seven, the final week, in the midst of the final week that uh, Christ was w was cut off. Okay, this was so we know that the, in terms of what we're going to be looking at today, these are two dates that are pegged um, in the timeline: the date that Jesus was baptized, 
the year that he was baptized when he turned 30 and the year he was crucified which is in the midst middle of the seven so you got three years and then the middle year and then another three years for the seven so it's the only uh, way that we can we which was uh, we, we can peg this particular date of the crucifixion um, now those those are two important things so what we're going to do now is i'm going to just i've got another table where i'm taking this information and i'm really just zooming into it and we're now going to look at into each of these years in in, in more detail okay um so that's what I, that was so i've just got to the end of my foundation to, to just to show you exactly what i'm really building this uh this next stage of the chronology on so this is the detail of of these seven years uh, looking more specifically at the first three and I've called it Jesus ministry so that's that's the let me zoom out a little bit so you can just see the colors right so there's uh, the Jesus baptism there's his crucifixion and that's the end of the, the, the so this is the whole seven year the the, the last seven okay um, from when he is he's, um, from the 400 so I'm going to zoom in again so the, we, there we've got the 483rd year where it was 29 AD and Jesus began to be began to be not become he began to be 30 years of age okay so just bear with me I know that there's an understanding that he might have been 29 at this particular because we understand from the script we can see in the scriptures that there was a time before at least a, a run-up uh, before his full ministry started and uh, we've to some extent considered that perhaps his ministry was in fact four and a half years but i think that what if you just bear with me have a look at what i what i've uh, dis what i've found in the scriptures and we will discover that there is such a run-up but it's not quite what we thought it was okay so just let's just, let's work through this systematically and then we can get through uh the what i what, what the, the crux of the matter that i want to share with you today so <clears throat> let's just work with what we've got we uh, so we've got that's the foundation here the 483 and then of course the other foundation was the when he was in the year 33 uh, AD that would have been that would have been halfway through the seven year the 490th year would be the seventh year that would be the end of Daniel's 70 weeks okay 70 times 7 is 490 so that's that's where we, that's just the so I've just given you the framework of that so what I decided to do was have a look through the through the Gospels what do the Gospels say in terms of the detail of the timing and there's only one Gospel that gives us the detail of the timing and that's the Gospel of John uh, the gospel, the uh, the gospel, uh, Luke, uh, Mark, and Matthew give us a lot of detail of his ministry, but they, no, none of them. In fact, it's very interesting that um, the, the 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 feast days in Matthew and Mark, the only feast day that's ever mentioned in Matthew and Mark, is uh, is is the the, the 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 feast of unleavened bread and Passover. Um, so, feast of weeks and tabernacles not even mentioned. The word tabernacles mentioned once in the in those books, but it was in terms of when Peter said uh, during the uh, configuration, he said, "Let us build a tabernacle uh, for for the three. So that's but the feast itself, the actual feast of tabernacles and the feast of weeks, and in none of the other feasts were mentioned. Only the feast of Passover is actually mentioned in those in those gospels. Okay, but John is a little bit is very different. John mentions um, the all the main feasts. He mentions Passover. He mentions. Uh, uh, the tabernacles in particular it's interesting that the feast of weeks is not specifically mentioned at all either so we've just got those two but uh, we'll see okay i don't want to get ahead of myself but uh, so we have we are we are now reliant on on john to a large extent to determine the exact timing of things okay um and uh, luke to some extent also because it was luke that told us that he began to be 30 um, in luke uh, 321 to 23 he told us he began to be 30 at the time of his baptism which we know occurred in 29 AD okay and it was after that that Jesus then went out into the wilderness and he was tempted for 40 days and then it was shortly after he completed that that he proclaimed the Jubilee uh, which was uh, therefore the end uh, of the uh, of the of the seventh year of the 
of the seventh cycle. So it was the 49th year, the end of the 49th year, so that we, and, and, and just before the beginning of the first year of the new cycle, the Jubilee year. Okay, so he proclaimed the Jubilee, and we discussed that in the last video. Um, and then his ministry really, really starts after that. Now, to date, I've typically, and I think most people understand that that's when his ministry started and lasted three and a half years till he was crucified. And that is true. I'm not going to dispute that. That is, in fact, how his ministry worked out. But we've also, in our minds, I had uh, uh, had the thinking that he that he that he appointed that he called his disciples at the beginning of his ministry, and that is in fact not what happened according to John. If we read it correctly, okay. So this is what I want to show you guys. If we we have to go to John, and when we go to John chapter one, um, and that's we, we, we discover that um, in John 1, we begin to, uh, uh, John tells us of, of a particular day, he doesn't say exactly when it was, he says there was a particular day that, that, um, that, the, uh, that, he, uh, that he was questioned um, with regards to, let me just get this, yeah, he was requested as to regard who he was, and he stated very clearly, "I'm not the Christ." Um, and he said, uh, "You know, um, I, I, he said that he was here." Uh, let me just go and see what I didn't highlight the important parts here, but um, it was the the priests and the Levites had questioned him, and he made it very clear that he wasn't the Christ, and he was the one that was crying out in the wilderness. Okay, he was the one uh, that was written of him as the one crying, "I am the one." The voice crying in the wilderness. That's he made it very clear that he wasn't the Christ. He says, "Okay, uh, you, you, I'm not." Okay, he's. Uh, they asked him. Uh, okay, he said, "I wasn't Elias," and I think somewhere he said, mm. "No, I can't. Really, I can't see it right now." But it is in your. Oh, yeah, there it is. There. I'm not the Christ. Okay, so that was what that was all about, and it was on a particular day. All right. And then it goes on to say, the next day, John sees Jesus coming, and he said, and he says, "Behold, in other words, look, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the Son of the world. This is He of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, I, and I knew him not. But he should be made manifest in Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing in water." And John bear record saying i saw the spirit so he's, he's now witnessing he says i saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode on him and i knew him not but he he that sent me to baptize in water uh, the same said to me upon whom thou see the spirit descending and remaining on him the same is he which baptizeth in the holy spirit so that was how john knew that jesus was the son of god the lamb of god okay and i saw and bear record of this that record that this is the son of god okay so that was on the next day the important thing to note here there was no baptism happening here this event this witnessing that this that we said look here comes the lamb of god was not at the actual baptism it was a time after how long after i don't know I'm g this is what we this is the matter we're going to get into Okay, but it was definitely not at the time of the baptism. If we go and look at the story of the baptism, which is described in in the other chapters, uh, uh, John doesn't give us the detail of the actual baptism. This is not the actual baptism. This is Tom. After, if we go to Luke, uh, I think it was in Luke three. Let's just go and have a look. Uh, and when, yeah, so this was the baptism, um, and. Uh, in red he said now when all the people were baptized it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the heavens was opened and the and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him and a voice came from here and said thou art my beloved son in thee I am well pleased so that was the actual baptism according to Luke not a lot of detail in there uh, Mark sorry it was in Mark 1 right so in Mark 1 uh, we see that his is also very brief um, it said it came to pass in those days that Jesus came of Nazareth uh, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan and straightway coming out of the water he saw 
the heavens opened up and the spirit like a dove descended upon him and there came a voice from heaven saying thou art my beloved son in whom i am well pleased okay this is the actual baptism notice there's no uh, john is not saying anything like look the son of god this is the baptism and and, and there was no that event of John was not the same as this this was as this event okay this was not when John said behold the 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 lamb of god okay this was at the actual baptism and Matthew's is very similar um uh that was where is um it's yeah it is uh, and when and then comes Jesus from Galilee to Jordan uh, unto John to be baptized but God f uh, forbade him, saying, uh, sorry, <laughs> but John uh, forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and said, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. Uh, now, the, uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, he, he, was straight, uh, he went, uh, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens opened unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting up lighting upon him and a, and blow a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i'm well pleased so there's the actual baptism the interesting thing is yeah that john kind of recognizes him he doesn't say yeah behold the lamb of god or the son of god he's not witnessing there he knows of of, of jesus now he you must remember john and jesus were their their parents were were, fam were, were family so uh, mary and elizabeth were related and so john and jesus would have uh, would have grown up together and and john would have come to know jesus uh, to, to maybe not as the messiah but he, he knew him as it's difficult to say exactly but i do believe that john is not identifying here this is this is not what john is saying uh, behold the lamb of god okay this was before th this happened uh before he saw the dove and uh, coming down on jesus and he was told that the, the understanding of who the 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 messiah is and the one that will be baptizing in the holy spirit would be the one that the holy spirit comes down and descends upon him like a dove and stays on him so and that hadn't happened just before the baptism it happened after the baptism so there was no way that john could know before the baptism exactly that that jesus was the messiah but he did recognize him as somebody superior to him in terms of his um, biblical knowledge etc and he definitely looked up to to jesus uh, for, for that if i could put it that way okay so when we go back to john uh, john 1 and we see that this account here uh, is 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 definitely not the actual baptism at some time after okay um, now we need to see can we find a time to this can we pin a time to this event um, we know we know th these these are these these uh, accounts in mark uh, uh, matthew mark and Luke, uh, 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 and, and uh, matthew mark and luke of the actual baptism we know we can pin that uh, to 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 a, a specific date we know that we can pin it to 29 AD and that was the baptism those those were the accounts we can pin those exactly um, to to that event and and in all of them they speak of uh, about the, the temptation etc uh, Luke is the only one that that gives us the detail of G Jesus uh, proclaiming the Jubilee okay so we 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 can pin those but we the, john's account we we have to seek how do, how do we actually pin a date to to that and i want to get into a bit of detail on that um so let's go to um let's go back to the scriptures and see what we can find here so we see that this was this all started on a particular day Do, john doesn't say exactly when but it was on a particular day that the that the levites and the priests came and questioned him but it does say to us that the next day he sees uh, Jesus coming and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Okay? And then, um, and then it goes on to say, And again the next day. So, uh, so it was on a certain day, then the next day, and then again the next day. So he says to again, uh, and, and this time his disciples, are, it, it records that his disciples overhear him saying it, and he says, uh, Behold uh, the, the Lamb of God. Okay? So, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, and he witnesses again for the second time the day after the f the first time that he did so.
okay? And then there's two disciples that hear him, and later we learn that those two disciples are Andrew and one other, some other guy. Um, but they, they were disciples of, of John, and they, they bear witness to what John said, that this is the Lamb of God, okay? And they decide uh, to follow Jesus, and they um, they do so, and, and, and in so... Um, not necessarily Jesus he says come and see he's not actually uh, picking them as uh, as disciples per se yet but it is the beginnings of some followings okay it's the first time that we actually see some followings um, people now actually latching on to onto the Messiah onto Jesus and becoming disciples so um, then of course the same day but later on uh, Andrew's brother Simon who turns out later to be Simon Peter um, he's also introduced to Jesus and that and then so that would have been on this this other day the, the again the, the next day all right which I've I've decided to call it day one this is the first time that somebody starts to follow and, and it's and it's let's mark it as day one for now okay um, then when we go down to the the following day then it carries on to say the day following so the day after this day this day one so now this this would be day two uh, Jesus would go forth into Galilee um, and he would find Philip and he said unto him follow me <coughs> again he chooses another disciple and and uh, and and goes on to describe who Philip is and then of course Philip um, he, he introduces Nathaniel and uh, Jesus says a whole lot of things there with regard to uh, um, uh, Nathaniel so this would have been uh, day two as far as I'm concerned for for taking on um, followers and then when we go to the next chapter uh, to to um, chapter 2 uh, let's go to John uh, sorry we were there okay so we, we, chapter 1 John 1 and then John 2 um, we see that it goes on to John and it's like a continuation and he said and the third day I believe this third day is the third day following so we've got day one of taking uh, uh, disciples day two of taking disciples and then the third day there was a marriage in Cana uh, and you know, of Galilee and that's where Jesus and his disciples uh, attend a marriage and this is where it turns the, the water to wine etc and this is by no means his first miracle <laughs> no ways this is this is not his first miracle okay i'm gonna this is where i, I think i'm gonna now get in to show you that th many people believe that was his first miracle but it wasn't if we go back to have a look at luke okay sorry before we get on to that okay we have to we have to pin it to a date still <laughs> we have to pin it to a time we haven't done that yet okay so um it was in this that it said that uh Yes, the Jews Passover was at hand. Okay, so there's the Jews Passover was at hand, and they were in, in Cana not many days. Um, they they and they continued there not many days. Okay, so we had taking of disciples on day one, taking disciples day two, third day wedding, turning uh, water to wine, and then they spent some time there. Um, and it, this is the beginning of miracles that Jesus did in Cana, not 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 the beginning of miracles per se, but the beginning of miracles in Cana of Galilee, and uh, manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. This is the first time that he's got disciples with him while he's doing miracles, but it's not his first miracles, okay? And after this, he went down to Capernaum, and he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days, and. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So yes, the the f first time that we've got an actual date. So th these events of taking of disciples and the wedding at Cana was a few days or maybe just a few weeks before Passover. Okay, and uh, it was at this Passover that um, that Jesus uh, basically uh, threw over the tables, and this is where he, where he. Uh, he, he, he makes a scourge out of cords and he drives them out of the temple etc and um, and he scolds them and uh, for using the temple um, for the purposes that they were that they were doing so this was just before Passover and then of course he attends Passover so let's just go back to the the table now <coughs> 
So we've got the, on a particular day, John witnesses to the, I, I said Pharisees, but it should be um, to the Levites, okay? Um, I will change that. Um, in fact, no, this is the, then the next day, witness, uh, 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 there's a witness, John witnesses, behold the Lamb of God, and then again the next day, John witnesses again, the, behold the Lamb of God. And this time, Andrew and another, they follow Jesus, and later on, Simon Peter is also um, included. Then the following day, um, that would be what I call day two, Philip and, and Nathaniel introduced, and Philip is, uh, and, and Philip, he says to Philip, follow me. So, and then the third day, which is the day of uh, the Kana wedding, and that would, would be, so that's a short period. Then they in Capernaum, not many days, and the Jews Passover is at hand. So, we've got a situation where we can peg these events and the beginning of the taking of his first uh, disciples just before Passover, the one where he overthrows the tables. He does attend the Passover and he performs many miracles. You can go read in the scriptures there in John 2, 16 to 23. He performs many miracles there as well. Okay. Now the question is, we know that this event happens after Jesus proclaimed, after his uh, baptism, his 40 days, and his proclaiming of the, the Jubilee. We know that he's proclaimed this Jubilee in the seventh month, sometime in the seventh month, uh, which is when the Jubilee starts at the time of at the Day of Atonement. He would have proclaimed it somewhere around there. Okay. Now, when now we could pick this Passover as this the time when would that the picking of the disciples occurred after these events, after the seventh month, going into the the new year, the first year of the, into the Jubilee year, the Passover of the Jubilee year. Uh, where Jesus began to take choose his disciples. That is typically what the church believes. And I believe that is wrong. I believe that there was a time period of about a year that these events, that his taking of disciples was closer to this Passover in the second year of the news of the cycle. In other words, the year after the Jubilee, that is the Passover when he actually overthrows um the tables and before which he just begins to take his disciples in other words this is a way he teaches now now we're going to go back and have a look in in luke he teaches and heals and casts out demons and he has no disciples yet when you read it carefully he spends the time doing these things at least for a year i believe this year this year of jubilee before he takes any disciples He's teaching and healing and casting out demons and he doesn't have a following yet. That, I believe, is the run-up year to his ministry. Okay, But his ministry still is only three and a half years. So if he spends a year to run up, that means he only spends two years, two years with, his, with his disciples. These two years. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so that you can see that. Um, Okay, so this is the I believe the run up here, and then just before this Passover, he picks his disciples. There's a, a year to the next Passover, and then he, that's the second year with his disciples, and this is the, the the Passover where he is crucified. So that's the beginning Passover. There's a middle Passover, and there's a the Passover where he was crucified, leaving two years that he actually followed. No, sorry, that he, that he had a following where he, where he taught his disciples and, and prepared them and trained them, etc. Two years of the three and a half years. Maybe it was a little bit over two years if you take, it was slightly before Passover that he, that he called them. And then, of course, after, after his crucifixion, after his resurrection, he spent some time with them as well. Uh, a couple of months before his ascension and then his eventual departure. So you could maybe add a, f a couple of months after the crucifixion if, if you want to consider that training time as well. But the time that he walked in the flesh with his, with his disciples was just a little bit over two years. Just a little bit over two years from that Passover to that Passover. Okay, so and the reason why I say this, if you go back and have a look in, 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 uh, in Luke, if you look at uh, Luke chapter 4, and it's looking in Luke chapter 4 where, where Jesus proclaims the Jubilee. So uh, chapter 4 verse 19 21 where he proclaims the Jubilee. That was just after his 40 days of temptation um, by Satan in the wilderness. 
And then when you read on from uh, chapter 4, 22 to, to, um, to the next chapter, chapter 5, 10, you will see, I just want to go, I'm not going to read it, but um, when we go to Luke um, 4, there's the temptation of Jesus, and then he's, um, it's, okay, it goes, this is where he, it says, so it's after he's tempted, that's the 40 days, um, he's, he's, he teaches for a while, he's teaching in the, in the synagogues for a, for a period of time, now we believe when, when this had happened, this 40 days temptation was just after his baptism, he went uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, after his baptism, he went into the wilderness. Uh, let me just go back here. Um, I believe that his baptism would have been very, very close or soon after he turned 30 at his birthday. His birthday would have been in the third month, the 15th of the third month, uh, at the Feast of Weeks, and his baptism would have probably have occurred. I'm willing to bet, okay? <laughs> I cannot prove this part, but I would not be surprised if Jesus' baptism actually occurred on the day of Pentecost, which is the ninth uh, day of the fifth month. That is the true Pentecost. The Pentecost is not at Feast of Weeks. The Pentecost is 50 uh, of seven, uh, um, uh, uh, seven uh, Sabbaths after the Feast of Weeks. It's true Pentecost, which is um, on the ninth of the fifth month. And I would not be surprised as, 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 as the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples uh, at Pentecost on the ninth of the fifth month, I believe Jesus was probably also baptized and the Holy Spirit descended on him on the ninth of the fifth month. I will not be surprised. I cannot prove it, but I'm reading between the lines. Okay, but it was somewhere around there that, and that, that means that during the sixth month he was, in t uh, he was being tempted. Uh, if that was the case, if I'm correct, then during the, the latter part of the fifth month going into the sixth month is when he spent his 40 days and then a short while he was teaching and then somewhere in the seventh month he proclaimed the Jubilee. Okay, we went into detail on that in the last video. I'm not going to cover that again in this video. Please have a look at that last video that I did on um, where we are in the Jubilee cycle. That one speaks uh, about how we know where Jesus proclaimed the Jubilee, etc. There's a lot of detail on that. So please have a look at that. Okay, so um, right. So if we so we we see just going back to the scriptures in Luke, we see that uh, he was teaching for a bit, and then he he comes into the synagogue, and he reads uh, um, Isaiah chapter sixty one, and in and part of that he 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 he, he, he preaches or he proclaims the acceptable year of the of the Lord, the the the, the jubilee, because that's what he says that this was this was fulfilled in their hearing, in their ears. Okay, um, so then it goes on to um, to say um, that uh, we, if we read here um, in the in the detail of this, and uh, um, um, maybe I should actually uh, just cover this, okay, because this is important that we read this in the context of what it is, um, and when I read it, see if you can see anything, any evidence of any disciples, okay, and uh, so so in all and all, okay, this was at the um, uh, let me just see where do I want to start okay that was after he proclaimed um, yeah I'm not this 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 is all events at that particular event and um, they they basically said well you know who is this and they said is this not Joseph's son and they wondered now well, who is this guy <laughs> and he says well no prophet is accepted in his own country and he actually offends them and they want to throw him off a cliff and he walks away from them okay that was what happened on that particular day and he walks away from them but then it goes on to say and he came down to, to into Capernaum in uh, a city of Julia and he taught them um, on the Sabbath days so yeah he's, this is more, more than one Sabbath he's teaching them on the Sabbath and they were astonished at his doctrine and his word uh, was with power and in the synagogue uh, was a man which had a spirit of unclean uh, of an unclean devil and he cried out in a loud voice saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou Jesus of Nazareth and an author come to destroy us I know thee I know thee who thou art the holy one of God so the, the demons know who they either is and he rebukes them and he commands them to come out and uh, they do so and they obey him okay and uh, they were all amazed and um, what word is this uh, for with uh, f this for with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits that they come out and the fame 
of him went out into every place of the country round about. So what we're seeing here now, he's now come out and he's he's starting to um, he's he, he's starting to become known. Okay, uh, the fame of him is starting to get. His people are starting to realize. But he's he's going around and he's healing. He's 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 uh, um, uh, freeing, uh, 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 casting out demons. He's um, he's teaching them. They're amazed at his uh, at his teachings. He even goes and he heals. Yeah, we speak, yeah, and this is interesting because we see here that there's a story that he arose out of the synagogue and he entered into Simon's house. And then we don't know which Simon it is. Um, it may well have been Simon Peter who later on became a disciple. But this is not at this point in time. Simon Peter is not his disciple yet. Okay. Um, this is, but it may well be his house and uh, and and his and Simon's wife's mother is is taken uh, with great fever, and uh, they they begged him to, to to heal her and he does that okay and he heals her. So we're already seeing here and this was I think uh, this was placed here to, for us to see that the people that later became his disciples were aware of what he was doing. They saw him. Uh, preaching, they saw him casting out demons. They saw him healing people. Because now you, uh, it goes on to say that they they brought many diverse uh, sick people, and he and he and, uh, and they brought them to him, and he lay lay hands on every one of them and healed them. So there was lots of healing taking place. There was devils that were being cast out, and uh, the the people that that were in that vicinity of of Galilee, uh, Capernaum. Uh, Simon was amongst them and probably m many of the other guys that later became his disciples were there. They weren't his disciples yet, but they were seeing the things that he was doing. Okay, He was starting to become known. And um, and this is what's been happening here. And, and it goes on to say that and, and, um, he, and when it was day, he departed into the desert and the people sought him and they came unto him and 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 stated him that, that, that he should not depart from them. And he said, no, but I've got to go and preach the kingdom of God okay so and then he went and preached in the synagogues of Galilee so the whole area of Galilee he was he was preaching in the synagogues and he was healing and he was um, casting out demons and people were getting to know him and he was becoming famous for his ministry so and he was doing all of this alone that's the point I'm trying to make here okay because it's only later in the next chapter that he starts according to Luke. Now he only starts taking uh, on disciples, and he and he. This is where he he, he now um, uh, he speak, uh, well even even here when he when he says to Simon he gets into Simon's boat and he says um, just push it out a bit away and he's ministering to the people from the boat. At this point in time, Simon is not yet his disciple. That's very clear, um, but Simon knows him. Why? Because he healed. His wife's mother <laughs> so he was already aware of what 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 Jesus was all about and he he saw he, I mean he refers to him as master and later on uh, after the miracle of, of pulling in the of throwing out the nets again and and um, and they pull in this big hole of, of, of this big catch that Simon actually says to him and he falls down at Jesus and said depart from me I'm a sinful man O Lord and he recognizes Jesus for who he is He's still not his disciple yet but he's starting to see that. Hang on a second. Um, you know, uh, I know what you, I know who you are. You know, I'm, I'm beginning to to get an idea of who you are. And uh, Jesus at this point says, "Okay, uh, from henceforth you will be uh, you you will catch men." So he's already starting to pull him in as a disciple. And this all occurs after having spent some time becoming famous in the area. So I think when we read these scriptures in this context. And we read John correctly um, that the, that he's witnessing as this is the the Lamb of God, the Son of God, uh, wasn't at his actual baptism, and that was at, at a time after. I can I believe that we can safely say that this witnessing of John was at least a year after his actual baptism. Okay, and that's and that year Jesus spends on his own, um, ministering, uh, teaching, healing, casting out demons, and becoming famous. Um, and that's why it was so easy for these guys to follow him because it wasn't just I mean if you think about it um, you know it, Jesus wasn't just some stranger that walked up and said okay follow me and they said okay great I'm gonna follow you no they, they'd already seen for a year at least or months already several weeks they'd seen what what he has been doing and they said they knew what he was about they knew who, who you know that he was an extraordinary person that he was uh, uh, an anointed person a person that was uh, doing miracles and 
and uh, they wanted to be part of that and uh, so I believe that it's safe to, to, to place these events of, of, of the identification um, and the beginning and the, and the choosing of his disciples at this Passover, not this Passover, leaving a year for the run-up and, and leaving only there for two years uh, for the actual um, training and preparation of the disciples that, that uh, Jesus did pick. Okay, so when we go on now, if we just follow on with John and we see his chronolo uh, chron chronological time, this is the first Passover that he actually mentions. Okay, in John 2:12, it's the first time, 12 to 13, it's the first time he mentions a, a date that we can peg anything to. It's at a Passover. We don't know which or which Passover, but we know it's it's just shortly before a Passover. Okay, he attends that Passover, and and shortly after that, according to John. The, uh, John the Baptist is baptizing and um, and Jesus is baptizing so he's got disciples he's doing that in the Judea, Judea area and this is where John says I must uh, he must uh, increase and I must decrease okay and this is where John is I believe in the spirit knowing that his time has come to an end now okay he's not in prison yet but this remember that he baptized Jesus at, uh, at least a bit more than a year ago he sees Jesus now he, he's he's been ministering for a year and he's now starting to take disciples and John knows his time has come to an end and um, so then shortly after that is when Jesus goes uh, to Galilee via S uh, Samaria and this is where you know, we have the the Samarian woman at the well and I've put put this in this time period somewhere after Passover somewhere in the the time of the harvest uh, would have been somewhere around the third, fifth, maybe six months, somewhere around there. I do believe that Jesus pegged a date to it because it was just shortly after the story of the Siberian woman at the well that Jesus makes this statement that we all know so well. The 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 fourth, uh, he, he says, uh, you say the, uh, the harvest is four months and I say the harvest is really already white and ready for harvest. Now, that we understand to be the four months between the 15th day of the third month and the 15th day of the seventh month is exactly uh, which, which is uh, the Feast of Tabernacles. And I believe that these events, the Sumerian woman events, occurred at the time in the third month, probably exactly very close to Feast of Weeks. Very, very close to that, that time of Feast of Weeks. And um, so then uh, he goes into Galilee again, and there he's uh, after this uh, this time period, uh, we after making that statement, um, which I believe pegs a date to it, um, and I think quite safely so. The Galileans um, were at a f at the feast. This is now referring to uh, in John. It doesn't say which feast, but they saw him. They saw the miracles uh, th um, that that he did. Okay. And I believe the Galileans are referring to this Passover here. This is where he attended the Passover and performed many miracles, and they they remember him. It wasn't too long after that, so they, they these Galileans know him, and then of course he heals the nobleman's son, and he does many other miracles in that area, um, and at that time. And we're now coming up to what John says, uh, the feast of the Jews. John in in John five one he refers to the feast of the Jews, but now he doesn't say which feast. Okay. That is that has been a problem for many. Which feast was John talking about? And we know that G Jesus goes to this particular feast, so it must be either uh, it's, it must be one of the uh, pilgrim feasts. We, it must be either Passover or maybe Feast of Weeks or um, Feast of Tabernacles. I believe because Jesus pegged this uh, four months to harvest, I don't believe it was Feast of Weeks. I believe it was um, the next feast in line, which would have been Tabernacles. Um, and it just makes so much sense that in terms of the whole timing and the sequence events of the description in John that this feast of the Jews which is not named which feast I believe is the uh, feast of tabernacles uh, that he attends and uh, he heals the, the lame man at the pool at this on the Sabbath okay he did a lot of things on the Sabbath um, a lot of healing on the Sabbath for a reason maybe we need to understand why he did so much healing and um, it's, it's, um, on, on a Sabbath to, to really pressing that he's the Lord of the Sabbath um, okay Jesus tells on at this time at this feast he tells of the day when he will he will raise people from the dead um, so again this is speaking at the time of the 
the end of trumpets which will be um, at the t at the Feast of Tabernacles when they will the people will hear his voice um, and the dead will rise and I think that it was what he was talking to more even more reason why I believe that this event was more about uh, more ad uh, occurred at Tabernacles rather than at a Passover because let me just explain this to you some people believe that this was Passover and therefore they can they can therefore justify moving these events to that Passover they call this one this Passover and then there's another Passover before them so they count they would count that as one uh, uh, sorry that, that one Passover two Passover three Passover uh, and the fourth Passover so that's they would count it as one two three four but I don't believe this should be called a Passover it's not a Passover it's a tabernacle okay because if we don't call that a Passover we sit with three one two three three references to a Passover which would be that one that one and that one this one was never mentioned I don't believe so. Anyway, so that's the that's the this is where we where, where people come and suck, and this is what you need to decide. I believe the evidence is enough evidence to 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 show that this was actually a tabernacles, not at Passover. Okay. Um, John, uh, uh, Jesus, at this event, at this uh, in, in this time period, at this this feast, he also speaks of John as a witness in in the past tense, in terms of past tense. And I believe that Jesus knew already at this point that John had already been beheaded. John was already dead by this time. So I do believe that John was beheaded somewhere between, um, well, between this Passover, just before, you know, he, was, he, he witnessed, just after he witnessed that this is the Son of God, this, the Lamb of God, um, uh, just after that, somewhere around this period, uh, in the third, fifth month, um, is when John was uh, in jail for a period of time probably shortly after Passover and I would not be surprised if John was beheaded somewhere close to the ninth of Av probably at one of their drunken brawls okay and just remember the, the 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 background behind the cause of him being beheaded was um, was a feast of some sort and I do believe it was a feast of um, new wine and I, I can't prove it I just believe it's somewhere around there <laughs> anyway it was shortly before the, the the seventh month that John was probably probably killed there is also another evidence that we know that he was probably dead there although, although it doesn't say that we do know later on and I'm, I'm gonna get to it now because we know that okay after this there's no events for that winter time I don't think there's anything mentioned in John concerning this period of time and the next time we we, we talk about it was shortly before Passover that he goes into the mountains other side of the Sea of Galilee and it was just before Passover and it was at that event that the miracle of the feeding of the great multitude the 5,000 which was the five barley and two fish that the, at this the, this event occurs shortly before this Passover okay as and and when we go to to Luke 9 the same event is described so this event of fi feeding the 5,000 is described in John but it's also described in in Luke 9 and it was in the description of Luke 9 together with this that um, it was confirmed that John was already beheaded so by this time of the feeding of the the 5,000 John had already been beheaded that's why I can safely say that somewhere here John was was beheaded be, um, uh, uh, at least well before this Passover but I believe because Jesus was referring to me in past tense here I think it might have even been before the the seventh month okay anyway so we know somewhere around there was and that 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 that, that confirmation in Luke 9 9 where it confirms that he had already been beheaded by the time of this miracle, the feeding of the 5,000, John was already dead. Okay, so now that whole thing that John said, I must, uh, you must increase, I must decrease, is now it had been fulfilled already within a very short space of time. Okay, um, right, so this was also the time when Jesus walks just after this, this miracle, he walks on the water, 
um, and then it goes on to describe how he speaks of himself being the bread of life and uh, and I, I kind of believe that was somewhere in this time period probably again related to Feast of Weeks being the bread of life uh, etc but can't say for certain exactly but it was somewhere in that period of time because we know that when he comes back into Galilee in John 7 1 to 2 we, we know that the Feast of the Jews of Tabernacles is at hand now we know again this is definitely the Feast of Tabernacles and uh, this was the final uh, tabernacles before he was crucified at that Passover. So they were really seeking to kill him at that point. He attends this one in secret uh, and he uh, makes himself, he, he appears, he reveals himself about midway through the feast. Okay, and that's all detailed in John 7. And he says that um, a little while you will not see me. So he's now already saying, it's not too long and you're gonna you're gonna crucify me okay and and on the eighth day he spoke of the of the living water attainable from him uh, this is where shortly after these events that the woman uh, caught in adultery is brought before him and he teaches these all that's John 8 now the beginning of John 8 the woman of adultery is brought and I believe this all happened shortly uh, somewhere well all around the the feast of tables and shortly after okay before the winter months but definitely before the feast of dedication so he teaches i'm the light of the world and 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 is the son of god and he, and he heals the blind man from birth and then it said that he attends the feast of dedication and it says very clearly that it was winter so i'm including it in the winter months so it would be somewhere around december and uh, as we know on our calendar uh, he teaches that his sheep will hear his voice. Uh, he returns to the place where, um, where uh, to the place of Jordan, where John once baptized. Again, confirming that he was definitely dead by that time. And Lazarus, and this is where um, Lazarus now falls sick. Now these are this is shortly before the new Passover. So Lazarus falling sick, and Jesus returning, and he raises Lazarus from the dead. We know that that was all shortly before the new Passover. Or so shortly before the Passover, that uh, um, where he was crucified, it speaks here in John 12, uh, where uh, of the six days before Passover that he returns to Bethany. That's where we raised Lazarus from the dead. Now he raised him obviously earlier than six days before Passover, but he now comes back and he has a meal there. And then the next day is the tenth day of the first month, the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. John 12, 12 to 36 and this is all before passover and then it goes into a lot of detail on all these events it's just interesting to see um, how the detail in john gets more and more and more so he spends uh, uh, the first let's call it the uh, the first sort of 10 chapters in john um, giving us a, a detail of, uh, of jesus time of, of his ministry basically from when he picks John is really just describing the two years from when he chooses his um, his, uh, his first disciples to the time of his uh, to to the time of the Passover when he's crucified. So John is really just a very very efficient covering covering that specific period of time, and he doesn't get into this period of time before that. We have to go to Luke for that. So um, yeah, so I think th we we now we get this is now the detail. It's very clear. Uh, that this was the the Passover where he was crucified as nobody can argue and uh, so now these are the choices we need to make uh, let me just wrap up um, the there was a fair amount I'm not going to go into all this detail we we, we know that um, because John gives us uh, well maybe maybe we should actually go into it because there were some uh, daily cr chronological events that John uh, gives us as well so we were yeah we're talking about sort of monthly chronological events uh, from from feast to feast type of situation where we can plot out the the feasts and then John gives us a daily from this crucifixion day to the the day of his resurrection which is the first day of the week uh, we know that he rises from the dead and then the south day same day he appears to his disciples in a closed room uh, and again late eight days later he appears to his disciples again um, so there's a fair amount of detail given to us a day by day in that uh, week uh, that part that week of unleavened bread at that time of, of Passover uh, and then later on we, he, he mentions that he showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Galilee this is when they went fishing 
<laughs> and uh, they basically just thrown in the towel. Said, uh, "This is Simon Peter now that led them." He says, "I'm going fishing. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I'm going fishing." And uh, so they go fishing, and then Jesus appears to them, and that's where they catch the 153 great fish. And he commissions his his apostle to go out, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And he sends them out, and and a few days later. Probably, I, I'm, I'm beginning to believe that it was probably a month later. I would not be surprised that this showing himself at the catching and the catching of 53 was on his birthday. That's just a personal belief. I probably could be wrong, but this 153 looks remarkably, remarkably like the 15th day of the third month to me, and they look like they were celebrating something, you know. But it could be much later. It could be closer to the fifth month or well, the ninth of the month the time of Pentecost and so this is when um, at this time when the Holy Spirit comes and anoints the apostles and that's where their ministry then begins um, and kicks off on the ninth of the fifth month probably not, not much different to the way Jesus uh, where he was baptized probably um, on the ninth of the fifth month but I'll leave that to you to decide there's no scriptural evidence for that I'm just reading between the lines. Okay, but what is pretty clear is that John is telling us, uh, the Gospel of John is telling us that the time of these disciples was only two years and or just a little bit over two years and not the whole uh, three and a half years, which means that Jesus for about the time of probably almost a year and a half, at least a year <coughs> after his baptism, uh, that he he was on his own. And this, I believe, is what Alan was seeing in the scriptures as well. That the, the run-up, that time when, when, uh, when, when he must, when he was increasing, and uh, and then uh, uh, John had to decrease, and that was that year. So, it's, so instead of the year being added to the total three and a half years, it's actually a year uh, part of the three and a half years. Um, so I think that that pretty much wraps up what I wanted to wanted to, what I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I will make this table available. I'll put a link to to a PDF um, so that you can go have a look at it, pull it apart. If I've missed something, uh, let me know. I'll gladly um, consider you know, evidence uh, contrary to what I've just portrayed here, or what I've tried to explain. Um, but I think it's 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 pretty awesome to see and to understand. Uh, the detail uh, yeah I think with that um, I hope that was a, a blessing to you uh, and uh, that it will add some further excitement uh, to discover more um, as we try to as we as we work our way through this next year God bless you thank you very much for listening